This is Coons Ford Turf Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. My man is in the house today co-hosting with me, and that, of course, is Wayne Viner. Wayne, thanks for making the ride in, uh, probably because there was no snow or cold out there, right? Oh, the weather's beautiful <laughs> compared to what it's been. It's been gorgeous, all right? Almost yeah. golf weather and a... In a but, demented way, in a, right? yeah, in a strange, in a strange sort of Minnesota kind of way. Well, Bruce, thanks for having me in. I mean, I think the the big news of the day still Maryland heading out to Ohio State and another basketball injury. Bruce, Dion Wiley diagnosed with a concussion. We thought he just got poked in the eye the other night, but uh, it's worse, and he's going to be out for the Ohio State game. I think Maryland's down to eight scholarship players. That's uh, that's that's. Devastating. Yeah, it's a strange, strange basketball year. It seems like it hasn't really gotten started yet for our Terps. Now, you were. Uh, Let me ask you a question. I'm not going to say there's no way that we can defeat Ohio State without Dion because Nickens could do a Dion. But if Nickens doesn't play like Dion has been playing, there's no way. Well, you would have said there was no way that Ohio State would have beaten up on Michigan State the other day, and they sure I still pulled don't that off. They did. They sure pulled that one off. But look, uh, Maryland a little shorthanded. When you said they were a little short at guard to begin with, uh, with just pretty much down to Cowan Herter and a little bit of Nickens, you're probably going to have to see somebody come off the bench that hasn't played at all if they're going to need any minutes at guard. Well, that kid Mona. Yep. Right? Uh, Reese Mona. Is that Reese it? Mona. He's from uh, Columbia area. And he wanted to be a Terp, and you never thought he'd get off the bench. But maybe tomorrow night, Maryland's secret weapon is about a six-foot-tall guard from the area who's going to have to step in and play some minutes. Cowan has been playing about 40 minutes a night. Herter's playing about 38. The number one thing that hasn't happened is we haven't seen any games where Cowan's been in foul trouble. And Maryland ill can afford to have Cowan off the floor heading up to Columbus tomorrow. They might be forced to play a zone. I mean, I don't know how well Ohio State shoots from the outside. In league, they, in league, forty three percent from outside, but overall not very good. They just got hot recently, yeah. and suddenly they're making three pointers. But historically, no. You know, it's funny that Michigan State game was so for whatever reason a thirty point win was very emotional for them because you know they came out okay, but then they like collapsed. I mean, you're talking about a game they had two days rest, just like Maryland did. But uh, it just goes to show how tough it is to win on the road, which even makes it worse on Sunday, all right, or uh, tomorrow, rather, against Ohio State. But you know what? Don't worry about that, because then they get to go to Michigan on Monday. <laughs> it, it's a tough stretch. And then they come up to Minnesota, huh. and then they go to Indiana. When does it end? Well, it doesn't. Uh, despite the idea that the Big Ten might not be as strong as it has been, that's a tough stretch of games. Minnesota is having some problems around their center Lynch, who is a three-time offender for some uh, sexual misconduct charge. I think he's is he pro- off the team at the moment. He's off the team. It looks like they're going to throw him out of school. But now it's coming down to who know who knew what and when did they know it? They can't. They're not leaning on that, and they should never be leaning on that stuff anymore. I mean, who knows what happened? But he certainly a, deserves the uh, right of innocence. But well, Three-time offense is not a good sign. No, and so I don't know anything about it, to no. tell you the truth. Well, I'm just saying that Minnesota's having some issues. It's I'm not the about, same team. I'm worried about the Terps, and I'm worried about tomorrow, again, staying in the game. I think you got to go zone, don't you, to protect the fouls? I mean, I don't know how you cannot. I, I would agree that you're going to have to play a little bit of zone. You only got, you're, you're very limited with your guard rotation at this point. You're beyond limited. Limited? <laughs> You, you, that's all you've got. All you've got. That's it. Is now please, nobody out there complain about Morsell's minutes because <laughs> without him, you don't even have a team. Boy, this is, starts to immediately get into how did was this team designed? How was this all put together? To still, as we've said on the air before, you only have one point guard, and even though you tried to shift the responsibilities off a little bit to Daryl Morsell for a minute here or Herder a minute there, there is no reliable backup. 
to Cowan, and there are really are no guard backups at this point. That well, actually Nickens play guard. is a backup, but he's got to play like a backup. Yeah, but he's not a kind of guard that you give the ball and say, dribble over here and pass the ball. And neither really is Wiley. The only two guys that you trust bouncing the ball around are Herter and Cowan. There's no real guard depth. Yeah, you got shooting depth, but that isn't full court guard depth. Well, does that mean they'll press us? Maybe. I would press this team nonstop because you have They're to wear out, you have to wear out one guy, which is Cowan, and the rest of it unravels. It reminds me of the years gone by when Steve Blake came in as a freshman, and he was pretty much the only point guard on the team, and his backup was Drew Nicholas, who wasn't the world's greatest point guard, and that was the year that we had the gone in fifty eight seconds to Duke. So right now the Terps are three and two in the conference, and I think you'd have to say that's pretty darn good. And I know they beat up teams that were one and eight in the conference or something like that. Uh, but to me, to be three and two in the conference, you're six wins away from nine and nine, which I, I think would be just a miraculous close. But right now, they're worried about winning game number four because because the gauntlet is there. You know, I think they have they still have enough talent to rise to the occasion at home, but on the road. I don't know. I don't know, Wayne. Well, they got their one road win at Illinois. I can't think that's going to be it. But as Maryland has sort of up and downed itself, I think Penn State's gotten better, but Maryland beat them. I think Rutgers has gotten better. Maryland's beaten them. On the other side, some teams that we've perennially seen as powers, like a Wisconsin, not so much. The rising power Minnesota, not so much this year. Ohio State looked to be on the rocks a bit until they beat Michigan State, which is one of the reasons that was a big game. Look, if... If uh, IUPUI or IPFW and Indiana State can go into Indiana and win, there's no reason this team, as it's situated, can't win. So let's talk I'm about— I'm not sure they can beat Ohio State. This guy, Kata Bates-Jopp. Yep. Is that how you pronounce I it? I believe so. He, okay. He's pretty good. 32 points against Michigan State. I was flabbergasted. Not that they beat Michigan State, mm-hmm. but the way they beat them. They well, ran away from them. How could that happen? We looked at, you and me looked at the stats on Michigan <laughs> State, and everybody off the bench who was killing us missed every shot. They missed every shot. They had turnovers. They were frustrated. Look, Cam Williams, a Baltimore kid, is getting minutes. Jay Sean Tate, uh, sort of a 6'5 or so, do everything for Ohio State. This is still a tough team, and I'd like to see Maryland come out and be a tough team. They are finally starting to remind me of some Gary Williams teams, and maybe one of the reasons is the rotation's about seven players now. And when you look back and say, what the teams that really made an impression on you that maybe shouldn't have been in a lot of games, I think about Walt Williams' teams and Kevin McClinton at point guard, and where Gary picked up spare parts and made it work, maybe Turge is going to be forced into a situation where he can't just substitute five guys. You've got to make it work with what you have you might see those coaching chops that you've talked about that he could coach come out. Because right now, I've been impressed with what he's been able to do. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he's been, I mean the team is missing uh, your best player, arguably, maybe your second best player, and you're missing no, no. your first guy off the bench. Well, well, let's go back to number 21, Justin Jackson, supposed to be a top 10 NBA draft pick. Do you have another top 10 NBA draft pick? Maybe. Well, not that you knew of when you started. No, but Bruno Fernando has been picked one day. He's been picked as number 15 on the draft board by Hoop Stats. It came out today. A rumor to go to the Knicks at 15, even though he's a raw talent. But he doesn't dribble the basketball. Justin Jackson, when he was playing well, before he hurt his shoulder, was a guy that could rip the rebound, spin, and run the court, and make the layup all on his own. And when you say that we've got other people to play guard, we don't have that. It, no, uh, Bruno Mark, can't bring the ball up. No, and, uh, and X- no. can't bring it up. No, maybe yeah. Tamayic, uh, every once in a while in his dream, can do that. He's going to have to play a lot. Yeah, but I'm not concerned about that. I am con- I'm concerned about Deion Wiley because I thought that Deion Wiley was the reason they won the game last li- last week. He finally looked like what he was advertised to be. Right? I mean, Cowan played out of his mind, and Morsel cer- certainly was a lot Look, better. Cowan played out of his mind as a true point guard. He didn't get a bucket till there was five minutes, six minutes left in the game. He finally started scoring. And that's what I mean. The coaching's starting to work. They're running plays. Maryland had another stretch where they had 10 baskets. When they went to time, I said, Bruce, we scored 10 baskets. We had nine assists. And the last 10 baskets were running plays. 
it isn't just a helter skelter thing and it looks good when they slow down and people can shoot play defense rebound and they won the game going away yeah it was it was a good win even though i uh, i was 0 5 and uh Fran McCaffrey what? lost his mind and probably blew the game at the same time. What? And well, he did, and I, he, but you said it fired him up. And after that, the next five minutes or so, it was theirs. They came back. They took the lead for a minute or two, but they just didn't have the uh, guns to match us. And not only did Cowens play great on offense, even though he didn't shoot that well, but he guarded this kid Bohannon, and Bohannon still scored points, but not like he did last year. He gave him fits. Speaking of which, speaking of fits, did you watch any of the Purdue game last night? No, sir, I didn't, but I hear the ending was... Yeah, it was a great game. But I have to tell you something. All of a sudden, there's a guy coming out of the Purdue team, and it's not Haas. It's this, you know, Dr. Casey, uh, Vince Edwards. And this guy... <laughs> and this, Right, right, Dr. Casey? And this guy last night was unconscious on difficult situations, pressure situations. He had a couple threes when they were down by three in the final couple minutes. He did everything right. They won the game. They win the game. Uh, That's a big win. You keep saying Michigan's better than you think. You still have to watch that. Is Michigan still better than you think? Michigan is pretty good. I think that the top three or four of of the Big Ten, unfortunately we're not in that right now, but you look at Purdue. Purdue's number five in the country, yeah. right? and, and with not with it's not a joke. You know they're very very good with Matt Haas. There's no doubt. Vince Edwards. Yes, I thought they're more impressive when we saw them. Uh, what's it now? Six weeks ago, five weeks ago, team wise, than they were when they had Caleb Swanigan. So something changed there. They are better than they were. Team well, maybe Pat, Matt Painter woke up coaching because he's had some. You and me have witnessed. Some massive faux pas from him. Yeah, let's see. Bruce's take on Matt Painter. He should have called a timeout. That's Bruce's line on Matt Painter about five times over. Well, we watched him blow a, a couple years in Big Ten games. Yeah, we went to the Big Ten tournament in Chicago, and that right. was your... Yeah, anyhow. Anyway, uh, Purdue's great. Michigan State is great. Michigan's a really, really good team. And Ohio State looks to be like a really good team. I Although think it's a, hard to tell. What's that record say? They're three and one. What are they overall? They are thirteen and four. So but they're four zero in the Big Ten. And when you're four zero in the Big Ten, that means a lot to me. So right? you're okay. Let's, that so means let's, a lot. And I so, know they've had some bad losses. Okay, they they lost the the common games. They beat Michigan State. They beat Iowa ninety two eighty one. Similar. Similar. Uh, they have a Michigan game. They won 71-62. We haven't played Michigan yet. And they went to Wisconsin, and that was, I think, one of the biggest wins, although now Rutgers beaten Wisconsin. But, boy, when Ohio State went to Wisconsin earlier this year in December and whipped them, worst loss in the Kohl Center, 83-58. And I thought Wisconsin was pretty good at that point. So I, I'm not really sure, but 4-0, can't go against 4-0. What's the worst loss this year so far by any college team? Uh, any team? Well, the Maryland loss against Michigan State wasn't nah, great. Nah, but, nah, Michigan uh, State's number one in the country. Worst loss? It was that Georgetown Indiana. loss. They lost by 35? To Creighton? At home. Yeah. I, I think Indiana losing to Indiana-Fort uh, Wayne wasn't a great loss. I mean, there, there's some bad... Indiana had a really rocky start. Yeah, well, the big you tech. might have said us losing to the Bonnies wasn't too impressive. I think the Bonnies are going to make the tournament. I yeah. don't think Fort Wayne's making the tournament. No, they're not. You know who used to coach Fort Wayne? Boy, I don't. This you should. Come on, come on, my friend. Who's my friend? Dane Five. Dane Five, yeah. He went right, he just went right into the head coaching job. Tillman used to coach basketball at Fort Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, he... Uh, uh, Dane Fife went right there, and now I think Dane is waiting out his time as Izzo's assistant. It's strange with you having friends on Michigan State basketball. I don't hate them as much, probably only for this one. And how then I got a- to meet Izzo. And how could was- anybody dislike Izzo? I mean, this guy, how long do we talk to him for? A, a while. And I, and for it, me, it was another half hour. Right. And we just went over everything, and he's talking to me, uh, you know, he knew who, well, I mean, he knows who you right. are, so that's, and, and then he knew because I was with you. Look, so Gizzo showed up when they honored Gary that time, 
You know, and, and then Maryland beat him the next night. Yeah, so that was great. great. He says, I'm walking into a maelstrom. He said, I'm walking but into that one game from 2010 when Gravis scored 18 of the last 20 uh, points. It, it's just, and I promise Scott Van Pell will never mention that again on the air, so I'm not going there. Okay, we won't go there because it still is. Uh... All right, so we got to update everybody on Wayne because Wayne was received a tremendous honor. All right. Uh, he was in the running to do some work on the Super Bowl. Can you imagine that? On the Super Bowl, uh, the one coming up, and he made the finals and just lost out to Chris Sims. Chris Sims and, and possibly some Phil Sims. So right. can you believe they picked a national guy <laughs> on off a of, you know, CBS? Super Bowl quarterback. Right. I mean, son. over me, I could have used who, my radio son, voice. Who does son play for? Texas? Texas. And he works for ESPN right now. But we're still in the running well, for some me, other work. When you told me that you were growing up in kids, it was you and him head to head. I said, hey, you know, it's, it doesn't sound good. No, that was a bit of a David and Goliath move, but hey, there's always going to be so next why time. why am I telling you this? Because uh, I got Wayne. Wayne's on our uh, post-game show, and Wayne does a lot of work with me. And go to TerpTalk.com, and you can see Wayne and all his super work uh, on videos. And it's only a matter of time before another one of my protégés steps up. Mason's a lock, but we yeah. got a long time with him. Right. But, you know, I think your time is coming, and uh, you should be congratulated just for making that cut. That's an incredible cut to make to be it's up a, against. Oh, cut. The word cut. Golf pun, because the guy sitting to my left is the, I can't say it out loud. Mid-Atlantic PGA Media Person of the Year. So let's hear it for Bill. Let's say, thank you, Bill. There you go. Bruce, anyway, yes. Yes. Golf yes, clap. Yes. Perfect. Uh but no, for you to make that level is just uh, fantastic. I'm really proud of you, and it, all your hard work comes out. And uh, yeah, just wanted to get that on the air. Well, thanks for saying that. Well, it's you know, no thanks is necessary. We got a lot to talk about tonight. I want to go over Anthony Cowan's statistics and why they're special about how this kid's been playing. Uh, I want to look at some basketball recruiting for 2018. I want to talk about some guys who came back for football, and I want to talk some lacrosse, okay. some Maryland lacrosse before the show's over. Right, and of course we got Dennis coming up, so we're going to talk some Flacco, we're going to talk some Ravens, hey, and, and we're going to talk some LeVar Ball. Oh, you're one of your favorites. I took a look at the CBS Sports front page today, yes. and top left above the fold, John Harbaugh's last stand with the Ravens. By Jason Lock and Four, so we can talk to Dennis from Coons Ford about that after this break. You are listening to Coons Ford Presents Turp Talk this Wednesday and every Wednesday here on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. We'll be back in a moment. There's no better place in Baltimore to buy your new or used car from than Coons Ford on Security Boulevard. Across from Security Mall, over the years, I have purchased many cars and trucks for GM Dennis Colazos, receiving the best price, service, and comfort in dealing with a top-notch executive. Coons Ford Turp Talk listeners can view their inventory at CoonsFordBaltimore.com. Coons Ford carries a huge inventory of Motor Trend's Car of the Year, the Fusion, Hybrid Escapes, the 35-mile-per-gallon Focus, Mustangs, Expeditions, and of course the F-Series trucks. Coons Ford simply likes to make a little bit of money many times. What a great place to buy your new Ford. That's Coons Ford of Baltimore, 6970 Security Boulevard, across from Security Square Mall. Take exit 17 off of 695. Remember, when you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Call 410-298-3800. Kelly Exchange is your one-stop shop for individual and family health insurance coverage. On kellyexchange.com, you can learn about health care reform, find out if you qualify for a subsidy, get quotes, compare insurance plans, and purchase coverage. With over 36 years of experience in the insurance industry, Kelly Exchange com is the only website you need to help you navigate the complexities and confusion of health care reform and purchase quality insurance for you and your family. Visit KellyExchange.com today. No one likes lawyers until they need one. But if you've dealt with an insurance company, you know that you're not in good hands, they're not good neighbors, and they're not on your side. I'm Mike Grossfeld. At Waldman Grossfeld Apple & Bear, we've been protecting the rights of people for over 40 years. 
If you've been seriously injured in an accident, hurt on the job, or have suffered at the hands of a negligent doctor, call me, Mike Grossfeld, at 888-8-LEGAL-6. That's 888-8-LEGAL-6. We'll fight for you. At Baltimore Neurosurgery and Spine Center, the professionals provide the highest quality care to the patients. My friends over at Baltimore Neurosurgery and Spine Center are fellowship-trained, board-certified neurosurgeons and interventional pain specialists that specialize in treating all spinal and intracranial disorders with more than 20 years of combined experience. The practice is founded by Dr. Ira Garanzik and his partner, Jim Conway. These two doctors are perennial Baltimore's top doctors. Not only do they perform complex inpatient procedures, but they also specialize in minimally invasive outpatient surgeries. If you're having problems with your neck or back, call my good friends, Dr. Ira Garanzik and Dr. James Conway at Baltimore Neurosurgery and Spine Center, 410-664-3680. Once again, that's Baltimore's best neurosurgeons at 410-664-3680. Is it a time for your family to have the services of a financial planner? Call Rob Weissman, a certified financial consultant. Rob has provided financial planning, investments, and insurance products to the Baltimore community for over 28 years. Rob will provide a free consultation, review your financial positions, and make recommendations. He will monitor your financial plan on an ongoing basis. Call Rob Weissman 410-868-6260. Rob Weissman is a registered representative of Parkland Securities Company member Finra Sepik. Baltimore, listen up. If you want crabs, you have to head to the Costas Inn on North Point Boulevard. There is no comparison in all of Maryland for the greatest crabs and crab cakes ever. Costas also serves unbelievable steamed shrimp, Greek salads, and steaks for lunch and dinner. Nick, Pete, and Costas Triantopolis run the perfect restaurant to go with family and friends. Give Costas in a call at 410-477-1975 and tell them the Turp Talk Guy sent you. Bruce Posner here with a message brought to you by Chesapeake Urology. Guys, if you broke your right arm, would you just say, heck, I'll live with it and make do with the left? Of course not. So why is it so many men with erectile dysfunction throw up their hands, assume it's just a part of getting older, and choose to live with it? The experts at Chesapeake Urology have treatments that can help virtually all men resume a normal sex life. Whether you're 48, 64, or 84, their doctors specialize in ED, and most treatments are covered by insurance. Even if you've tried pills without success, the specialists at Chesapeake Urology can show you better treatments. Don't live with something you don't have to. Call Chesapeake Urology at 877-422-8237. That's 877-422-8237. Welcome back to Coons Ford Terp Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. Funny, uh, my man Dennis is tied up in a meeting today, so he can't make it on. But uh, you showed me the article. I just read it about the Ravens. Not a bright, not a bright forecast for John Harbaugh. No, it's not. The- this was in... Uh, this was on the CBS Sports online, cbssports.com. That's Bruce Posner. I'm Wayne Viner. What was the headline, Wayne? The headline on that one, hope I didn't put it away here. I might have jumped off of that. I'll get back to uh, it here for a second. It. it was something about that he's kind of like on the hook right now by uh, grabbing Martindale and as his uh, coordinator. Right. John John Harbaugh's last stand with the Ravens and the the subheader, the Ravens seem stuck in the mud, leaving many to question how long John Harbaugh will be coaching in Baltimore. So he puts Martindale up as the D.C., doesn't really go out of the house for that. Right. He seems to be stuck with Flacco because of the dead cap space. You can't get rid of him. They don't seem to want to get rid of Harbaugh exactly. He's in the middle, and they're supposed to draft 16th. Now, Dennis's big thing is the draft, but I think it's sort of funny, after watching Alabama and Georgia last night, that if you have the 16th draft pick and you don't do anything, the land of 10 uh, off of uh, CBS here says that the number 15 draft pick in the nation is Roquan Smith, who's that fantastic linebacker from Georgia, and number 16, 
Calvin Ridley from Alabama who caught the tying touchdown pass. Didn't have a great game, though. No, he didn't. And then 17, a defensive tackle has made a big impact as Christian Wilkins from Clemson. You know, I so, hate to say it, not to interrupt you, but if this guy, Rokon Smith, was available at 16, you know, for us, I might have to take him well, over Ridley. I swear to you. this guy. I, how can you say that? When you're the one screaming, you got to put some offense. You have to they give can get re- somebody in the second round. From about 40 miles down the road, Mr. D.J. Moore, all right? They can probably get him in the second round. And for my money... I'd take D.J. Moore. If D.J. Moore was on Alabama... He'd be in a top five draft pick. Right. But D.J. Moore doesn't do one thing that the Ravens need. He does do one thing. He catches the football. And he plays really hard. And he's pretty fast. He's fairly fast, but he is not breakaway deep threat fast. And that's where the Perriman pick costs him because he can't keep drafting big speed and have it not be able to play. But you you were right that you, even though the Ravens started to score 40 points in a few games at the end, when they really needed an offense to show up against the Bengals, what'd you get from them? Uh, Nothing. Up, up the middle, up the middle, and a ball at uh, Boyle's feet. Yeah, one first down in the first half, is that correct? Yeah, but one first down would have won the game in the fourth In the quarter. end. Right. Well, that's part play calling, part who's on the team. Yeah. Uh. I can't. I'm not going to keep uh, crying about it, but I just see what is going to be the difference next year. That's my question to you. Uh, the same I, coaches still have morning way. Still going to be Flacco. We we did find a halfback, a great running halfback, and this kid Collins. But where where you know you need four receivers. You know, okay, so uh, the kid Moore, Chris Moore, made his. Way onto the team. Can you keep relying on Campanero? When <laughs> That's who I was, our favorite guy. Yeah, we love him, but he keeps getting hurt. You he know? does. And he's not a deep threat. He's not somebody that's going to change the defense. And we keep talking about, now that you realize what's really going on, being able to move the safeties back to create running lanes. And when they don't think you can throw the ball, they take two or three steps up, and they can attack. Well, and, and, and they Perryman, do. you go stay with Perryman. I mean, look, coaches are never supposed to throw guys under the bus. And when he was quizzed by Stan Charles about Perryman, Harbaugh didn't throw him under the bus. But, you know, in his mind, they know that this is one of the all-time busts as a Mm first-round pick. And, you know, I can't see how you could stay with him and delude yourself into thinking that he's going to be the guy. And I don't think they can. So they they got to sign a free agent if there is one. They might have to draft Ridley. They might have to, you know, take a gamble. But... I tell you, Ridley didn't look to me to be the best receiver in the country. No, he didn't. And he's really listed as the best receiver in the country. Supposed to be one of the top receivers. He didn't have the greatest game, and but when they his needed to score. Looked, his brother looked pretty good. His brother looked fantastic. But, of course, we didn't watch Alabama but, all season. It's not really fair. We well, watched him a few times, but let me go back to, I, I do want to concentrate on that go national ahead. championship for a second. What a game. Who do you think is still making all the decisions for the Ravens? I mean, you watch these guys all the time. I think part of the reason they're in trouble is the decision-making of who they're bringing in is it just isn't working well, out. I think that falls on Ozzy, but I think it is a team effort. In other words, it's it's everybody participates in that draft. Ozzy is the one who really makes the calls. But look, there's been some bad ones, but this kid Humphrey was a good pick. I mean, uh, to pick up a... Uh, a corner who's got the potential to be a shutdown corner if Jimmy Smith could ever stay healthy. He can't. You know, it, it, you have a hell of a secondary. And, you know, Weddle and Jefferson, you know, did we lose the game because of defense? Yeah, the defense could make the final stop. Who's that on? I don't know. Is I, I really just don't know. It Was it on DPs? I don't. Is it on Harbaugh? Here's the bottom line. It keeps happening. And, you know, the radio you know, is funny. Like uh, your pathetic Redskins down the street, all right? They've had years of, they have like 5 and 11. They have, you know, 7 and 9. Oh, they've thrown in a 3 and 13 there, too. I mean, how many years out of the last six were they not even in the running for the playoffs? It's, they've almost hit this thing. The last three years, they're a game over, half a game over 500. The last three years. But before that... They won the NFC East, and the next year they went 3-13. and 13. Right. And so my point is this. Every year, Harbaugh's been 8-8, eight or eight, maybe 1-7-9 and nine in there, but 8-8 eight, eight or 9-7 and seven and better. Now, I know you can tell me we didn't play anybody in everybody's second-string quarterback. That's just how this game has just evolved. 
And that's why when you watch that game between Alabama and Georgia, Georgia, it was just a great game. And yeah, the kid missed the field goal. I put down on Saban. Never should have moved the ball to the middle of the field. The kid was yanking every ball to the left. So if he was all the way to the left, maybe he would have yanked through. All right. right. All the way to the right. Maybe he would have yanked it through. Who knows? He puts him in the middle. That's where he's been having trouble. And as you said, when I brought up the Tua, and I'm not even going to touch the last name, but right. the, the freshman Tua quarterback. Tua Piota or something. Go ahead. Or something. Or something's closer. Uh, almost let the clock run out before the young man, Papa. Boy, the names are legend. Thank you. The names are legend here before he missed the field goal. And then on first down, he gets sacked for a 16-yard loss. It brings up second and 41. And then he throws a perfect ball into the coverage right down the chimney. He just broke free. The receiver breaks free from the corner. All right, here's the bottom line. This kid's, ni- this kid's 19 years old. That's number one. Number two, he di- wasn't in a significant play all year. All year. Saban's got the guts to go to him in Can the second half. Can you believe that? All right. That I think that part's almost unbelievable to me. Listen, Saban has the guts to go to him. All right. And then he throws, he looks off a receiver fantastically. He gets the safety to move to the right. And he has this guy and he's got to put the ball right on the money in stride. At and the right guess time, what he did. He did it. He did it. And to me, and this kid was cool as a cucumber afterwards. And the rest is history, as they say. Alabama wins again. It sickens me because I really, look, I will give you credit. You said Alabama is still the best team and all that stuff when they were selected. But I would have loved to have seen uh, Alabama play Ohio State. Or, look, Georgia, Alabama was good enough. But, I, I, you know, as a Big Ten fan, and you look at the teams in the Big Ten, uh, certainly at the top echelon of the Big Ten, I mean, how close was Wisconsin? How close was Ohio State? How close was Michigan State? Why? How about Penn State? Penn State. One mm, choke. One choke against that, Ohio State. That's a, Well, that it's the Michigan State game didn't help them either. It was by a field goal there. Both, the, the, both of them were on the road. Both, I mean, look, there's no excuses. They lost two so games. So how about UCF, who has now decided they are national They're champions? They're not national champs. You can't be. Look, they beat Auburn, who beat Georgia, and beat Alabama. But you can't go that theory. I, I, I just envision UCF playing Alabama, and it's not a game. I really don't think it's a game. Now, maybe I'm wrong. In that setting, I don't think it's a game. Boy. But go to eight teams and end this stupid argument. They wouldn't the have made it. They still wouldn't they have made, made it. it. Undefeated, they'd have made it. I don't know. Maybe if you make the rule, if you're undefeated, you have to go. But they were ranked 12 when that came out. I think they would have made it. And if they didn't make it, they didn't make it. But you know what you got to do? And now the coach is gone, Frost. And next year, they'll probably be a, a mediocre team again. Look, me and you are so stupid. We looked at UCF on the schedule, and what do we do? Said winner for our Maryland Terps. We checked off the win. Hey, so what do you think? We lost 38-10, to 10, Bill. Uh, right. We were out of quarterbacks, but I'm not getting into that now. 38 you, to 10. What do you think of this, uh, what you call the Homer TV that they had the I other channel? I love Explain it. to our fine listeners what that I is. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but they had two Alabama homers against two Georgia homers, and they were both taking turns talking, not together. The two Alabama guys were on the Alabama sideline, and the two Georgia guys were on the Georgia sideline, and all they were doing was the same kind of stuff that Wayne and myself do. It's like really criticize, really second guess, wondering what's happened. Yes, we, and when their team was doing well, you know, praising them to the end of the world. It was great. It, it was, was Homer City, and it was a great way to watch the game. It really was. I had a lot of fun, and I watched it the second time. And, you know, the other show they had where they had all the SEC coaches there commenting on it. But they're building up the SEC like there's nothing else in football. And I don't believe that to be true. I'd like to see Alabama play in the in, in the Big Ten. I'd like to see them run that gauntlet of having to play uh, that our four teams, right. all right, and maybe throwing a Wisconsin and a Nebraska on the road, all right? And I'd like to see what would happen, you know? Well, they didn't play. Uh, the argument against Alabama even getting into the top four 
was that they didn't play that great a schedule. I mean, other teams are out playing as USC can play, and we decided to play Notre Dame the same weekend that Alabama decided to take on Mercer. Well, when Alabama I mean, so, when Alabama signs up Mercer again to be their opponent, that should automatically eliminate them and should automatically eliminate every one of those teams all right, from, from being in the tournament to take that win. That win should be a negative. It should be washed out. It means nothing, all right, absolutely nothing. You play against a, uh, I don't even know if Mercer's not number one, uh, 1A team. I mean, a uh, Division One team, are they? They're a 1A. So, it, and it's really just the same thing as Maryland playing Towson. It's not fair. What did Maryland win, 63-3 to three or something? Right. I mean, the Alabama wins that are, came up a little questionable. Fresno State, Colorado State's a real team, so that counts. Um the Mercer game. Everything else was legit SEC football. Well, why so that, you know why aren't we demanding that maybe the SEC and the Big Ten a challenge? A, a challenge. Tournament. We could host in your backyard. Why not have a challenge every year? All right, and you rank the teams how they are, and Alabama's got to go to Ohio State, or Ohio State has to go to Alabama. That is a fantastic idea. Think that it, would be a better than the first week of the year or the second week when they play? Everybody plays a stiff. You know, and, and, and you know, you're not going to be knocked out of the, the chance to go in the tournament if the, if you lose that game. Right. It's not a bad loss. And it's one of the great road trips you'll ever have because you probably don't get to do it again. So that would be great. You know, I mean, to go to a, LSU. For, for to Maryland, go to LSU. Tennessee. Tennessee's, I'd to, like to go. To I want to go to Ole Miss. To, I want to go to Ole Miss. To go to the Swamp. To go to Mississippi State. To go to Ole Miss. Go anywhere. Even Vanderbilt. Even Texas A&M. Right. Even Kentucky. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll, we'll stop at we Vanderbilt for today. But, but my point is, well, Maryland would be in that echelon that goes to Vanderbilt or Kentucky or, right. or somewhere like that. You know, Maryland doesn't belong going to Alabama, but I guess Alabama would demand Maryland, all right, just so they wouldn't have a game where they could lose, you know. But uh, <laughs> This isn't college basketball. Speaking of which, yeah. Jim Harbaugh on the line a little bit? You're hearing some real negative things. I am. I he mean, lost how many? Eight of his last 16 games or something? His, well, they were 8-4 and four this year, went 8-5 eight and eight five, five I guess, with the, with the bowl. They were the right. lone bowl loser for the Big Ten. So that did not go well. And it, look, he demanded Superman-type money. Not exactly Gruden-type money, but Superman-type money. And they just expect a Superman-type outcome. Well, look. And they're not getting it. Eight and five, and Durkin has a statue erected of him in front of... uh In front of the stadium. Yeah, but he didn't... He doesn't act like that. Eight and five for him, for Harbaugh, you know, is a failure. Losing to Ohio State, he's lost to him three times now? Yeah. That's a failure. Look, if we were paying what they're paying to get Harbaugh... To coach at Maryland, and they went eight and five. You'd say we're overpaying for this guy. What the heck are we doing? I mean, eight and five is great, but for that kind of money and to put up with his baloney for that, I mean, other than selling a bunch of khakis at Walmart, I don't know what he's he's helped the brand, but th- there's no output. Hey, John was at this, his press conference at the end of the year, and I won't talk about the press conference, but he comes out wearing glasses. I said, wait a minute, which he's Harbaugh? Never, he's never worn glasses in his life to a press conference. Nobody mentioned that either. It was like the Jim Harbaugh look. I yeah. like the look. I like the brand part. As you would say, the uniforms and the brand and all that, eh, does he win the game? No. Well, what good is he? I mean, how many pairs of khakis are you going to sell? I talked to uh, a big Michigan booster, and I won't say his name. I said, well, is a big booster. When you compare it to Stephen Ross, nobody's a big booster, but... This guy is a pretty good, you know, lifetime supporter, everything else. And I said, is Harbaugh in trouble? And he said, not yet. But, you know, he's one bad season away from being in trouble. Because if Stephen Ross wants to pay him off of his contract, he'll pay him off. He, doesn't, he just gave $250 million, like for the third time, hmm. to Michigan. Why do you think they're going to have the best lacrosse facility in the country? Well, that's leading us towards lacrosse. and uh, We'll get into it a little bit when we come back. Got a lot to talk about still. I want to get into LeVar Ball a little bit and uh, also Lonzo's performance last night, which I thought was off the charts. Right, but thanks to Coons Ford, and we'll have Dennis back on next week. Dennis will be back week. on next week. I'll be on a show tomorrow at 4.30 down the dial. Uh, Coons Ford, let me tell you, 
Dan, I mean, Wayne, I was there, I think the day before New Year's or New Year's Day, I had to stop in, and I got to tell you something. That place was so busy. I could, I've never seen a car dealership that busy. He keeps setting records. He's doing something right. Uh, there's no doubt. I've never seen a car dealership as busy as Coons Ford was. Uh, it was just incredible, and there's a reason why that happens. Uh, that'll be it for this segment. This is Bruce Posner. You're listening to Coons Ford Turp Talk. Got Wayne Viner as my co-host this, uh, this week in the house. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. This is Coons Ford Term Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. You know, I'm going to talk about our good friend Jeffrey Gaber, Wayne. And besides being just a super doctor, a guy you love to go to, and uh, my family goes to him. And besides that, he does some photography work for... uh, Turp Talk. It's pretty damn good, isn't it? Yeah, we've seen uh, the Orioles pictures were, were really nice. Professional. Five like, star. Yeah, yeah, really, really good stuff. And uh, that's his, uh, obviously, that's his passion. And uh, he really does some good work. All right. The practice specializes in internal medicine and orthopedics. Gaybird Associates have two great locations in Baltimore City, next to Mercy, to, next to Mercy Hospital, and in Pikesville. Gabert Associates now has the nasal swab test for quick diagnosis of influenza A and B, as well as the strep throat swab test. Remember, get the flu shot. Wayne, did you have your flu shot? No, I haven't Shame. done that Wait, yet. What are you, above the flu? I am above the flu. I'm like a chimney. I'm above the flu. But it's free now. <laughs> it's free. I should, all right. I, I will look into that. But did you have yours, Bruce? Of course I did. Yeah. Uh, other available vaccines are for tetanus, shingles, pneumonia, and HPV. You're not ready for those yet, but you're getting there. Check out the website at www.drgaber.com. Uh, the firm also includes my good friend, Dr. Doug Shepard. Really, really good guy. Remember, call Gaber and Associates at 410-653-8840 for the Pikesville office and 410-986-4400 for the Baltimore City office. That's Dr. Jeffrey Gaber. All right, let's move into segment number three. Enough on football for a while till probably next year. Right. But Derwin Gray, Dur- Derwin Gray is coming back. Yes. And who else? Uh, and Damian Prince. And yeah, Damian they're both, Prince. So both both tackles are coming back. Now, right. the NFL guys say that probably Prince needs to get in some better shape and might be better off as a guard. And that, But Derwin Gray might have graded out as the best offensive lineman, best tackle in the Big Ten. Uh, a lot of the difficulties they put on the quarterback, but in the grading system, Prince and Gray came out as five-star guys. And look, they're very highly recruited, and they started to play well. But as I've talked to, with Mason, I've talked to you, when Maryland needs one yard, third and one, they need a yard, this offensive line hasn't been able to get it. So maybe you're going to start to see some more of these five-star guys. That's a local disease around here. Can't get a yard. All right. Between the Skins and the Ravens and, and Maryland. Right, right, but you wanted to talk about Anthony Cowan and how many minutes and what he was doing. Yeah, you you teased that. And- yeah, I teased that. I want to talk about it because in the last game, which I was flabbergasted when I looked at his numbers, and I know you got him up there, but I got him here somewhere. Uh, Anthony, dig this. Four for 11 from the field, not so great, but not bad. Didn't make a three, not so great. Seven for nine from the foul line. One rebound, all right. Seven assists. Handled the ball for 37 minutes, and you know the real stat. Zero. Zero turnovers. Right. Now, if Anthony Cowan ends the game and has zero turnovers, I will tell you this much. Maryland will be in every game. Well, the litmus test for a point guard, you want a 2-1 to one assist turnover ratio. Right well, now, 7-0. Seven to zero. That's seven, infinity. That's pretty good. On the season average, he's right on that. Two to one list, and I was pulling my hair out the other day because of whose turnovers. Who, who's Checo? Che- oh. Checo had five turnovers. How does the center have five turnovers? He isn't playing center. He is playing power, power forward. forward. How does he have five turnovers? Because they put him outside the three point line to make him handle the ball. And guess what? He can't. He can't. They Which let- is why, to me, when Tamea came in. They were a better team. Yes, they seemed to. And somebody on uh, one of the sites said it's the second coming of Terrence Morris because Tomajic is supposed to do it, all the little things. Not really a big score, but the offense 
runs better. But you're looking at Cowan for this season. Last year, he was the starter. He was played big numbers, 29 minutes as a freshman. In his sophomore campaign right now, and considering almost all the games we play were cupcake games, he's averaging 35.6 minutes for the season. That includes all the games against Butler and Fairleigh Dickinson. And Don't put Butler in Fairleigh Dickinson's uh, class. That's not okay. fair to Butler. But there was a lot of games in there. Catholic and Gardner-Webb. Unfortunately, we can name them to infinity. But uh, what the heck? He's playing great. And all the coaches, McCaffrey just raved about him the Do other Do you night. think in the Big Ten you can average at his size and body type 36 minutes a game? Yes. Turgeon said he could play every day. He right. said, in fact, after the game, somebody asked him, after I started this last yeah. week about 40 minutes, he said, I asked him, could he play 40 minutes against Michigan State? He said, Bruce, if I had another game out there right now, he could play 40 minutes. That's the kind of shape he's in. Oh, that that is good shape. But it's not only on the basketball side are we in good shape, but you were telling me that from on the lacrosse side, the guy that wins the the national game is a Terp, the goal scorer. What, what happened the other night with Team Connor USA? Kelly, Connor Kelly trying out for Team USA. He didn't make it, but when the game's in overtime and all the great ones, Rabel couldn't score and uh, Pinnell didn't score, and I'm naming the great guys of the game, all, all of them could not put the ball in the net, including some Maryland guys, John Haas, who had a great game, and Drew Snyder. It was Connor Kelly who popped the nets from 20 feet out to win the game for his side of the squad. Didn't get selected, and you know what? I'm sorry for his sake he didn't get in, but he's got he's got another mission this year, and that's the repeat for the Terps. And this guy is unconscious. He He's great. Name one of the five captains along, no surprise, Danny Morris, the goalie, mm-hmm. Tim Rotance, you knew, of a fifth-year guy. I'm, I'm happy to see Adam DeMillo get that. He's playing midi. Yeah, Mitty, number 23, who happened to score two games, two goals in the championship yeah. game. Uh, Connor Kelly and Bryce Young on defense. Uh, Bryce Young will be your Tim Muller this year. Uh, I just uh, can't wait for the season to start. And preseason, this is from where U.S. Lacrosse Magazine, Maryland is number two to Duke with Denver and Albany and Yale rounding out the okay. top five. You told me, and I know we're coming up, on the clock here, but you told me you got to watch out for Albany. Somebody told you Albany is the dark horse favorite to take this whole thing. Yeah, Nish Shroff, I was talking to him. He was doing one of the uh, Maryland games, and he said he picked Albany to win it all because uh, of their great score and the addition of the uh, Nanakote. Nanakote. He said he's the best Native American Indian player well, that he's, he's seen. Well, he's on the Thompson level, supposedly. Yeah. I, have, I have my questions about that. I also have my questions about whether or not he's 18. Uh, he doesn't look like he's 18. Right. But and, anyway, well, then you, he's great. He's great. Then at seven, you got Rutgers. It's coming up from, to me, coming up from nowhere. You got Rutgers, Ohio Rutgers State. Rutgers is going to be great. Penn, Penn State. State. So when you look at Maryland's schedule, five of the first six games are at home, and none of those are Big Ten games. And then you just hit the Big Ten. Uh, every game but down the stretch. But you got Albany in there. You got Notre Dame in there. You got North Carolina in there as your out of conference games. You have, uh, of course, always Navy. You got. Uh, you're going down the high point. You're playing Penn, and you got Villanova, who beat Maryland last year. Of course, they don't have Fracaro anymore, but they did beat Maryland last year. So it's a great schedule. And then they have this great game at Carolina, the Pacific Coast shootout, and then it's all Big Ten after that. Yeah, well, you know, you wind up at Hopkins, so I mean, mm-hmm. it doesn't get much. And you know, Hopkins, they're they're, they're going to be gunning for us like you can't even imagine this year. Yeah, I don't care what the record is at that point. Is it, anybody off of Petro's back yet? And what's he have to do to get the people off of him? He's got to win a national title, which is so unfair. It's a joke. But I really believe the standard for Hopkins, the standard for Maryland, the standard for Denver, Notre Dame, Syracuse, every one of the top tier teams is what get to the Final Four. I don't think the Heat comes on if you're in the Final Four. I really don't. But uh, I think Petro, I mean, I, you know, I, all I know is Hopkins took it to Albany in an exhibition game, which doesn't mean much. And now all of a sudden you hear rumblings. Virginia wants to play Maryland back on their schedule because you need that kind of win. Yeah, you do. Then Maryland plays Virginia in an exhibition game. This year's Big Ten tournament in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Lovely place to be in well, May. Wait a but, but let me tell you something yeah. about Virginia. When Maryland couldn't get anybody to play them, mm-hmm. when Maryland couldn't get anybody to play them, 
No, the, Virginia didn't step up. Oh, no, Virginia Notre hasn't Dame, helped. Uh, Notre Dame and Corrigan stepped up right away, mm -hmm. and so did Bresci from North yeah. Carolina. Why in the world should we play them? These two teams have been loyal to us to play us home and away, and that's how it should stay. But, uh, you know, so I'm sorry, Virginia. And my good friend Alan Hirsch. <laughs> I have to tell you about him one time. He scored a winning goal against Maryland. As a goalie, think about that. We're out of time, guys. Wayne, thanks a lot. See you Saturday on the Sports Maven.